Being a first doesn't matter if you're also the last. My hope with my election was that it could send a small but important message to a young LGBTQ person here in Delaware or elsewhere that our democracy is big enough for them too and that their voice matters. With more LGBTQ Americans elected to office than ever before, the future of our country never looked so diverse and so queer. Say hello to the barrier-breaking politicians of the rainbow wave. My name is Sarah McBride. I'm the brand new state senator for Delaware's first state senate district. And with my election in November, I became the first openly trans state senator in the country and the nation's highest ranking transgender elected official. More than anything else, I'm grateful. And I'm hopeful and I'm inspired. Sarah McBride is a courageous young leader. And she is right now the first trans person ever to address a national convention. It's hard to be what you can't see. When we have possibility models who show us that we can live our truth and dream big dreams, that's just not a life-affirming message. That can be a life-saving message. Growing up, I developed a, a love of, of politics because as I struggled with who I am and as I struggled with my place in the world, I found hope and inspiration in the history books, in the change throughout those chapters in government and politics that helped bring about more equality for more people. I'll never forget going online in 2009. I was probably 18 and seeing the news that Amanda Simpson had become the first trans woman to receive a presidential appointment. That was one of the first instances where I had that critical exposure to a trans person who wasn't the butt of a joke, who wasn't a dead body in a drama, but who was out and who was thriving. Ultimately though, diversity in government isn't a luxury, it's a necessity because we cannot craft effective solutions for diverse communities if we don't have the diversity of those communities represented at the table. I feel a deep sense of responsibility to ensure that I'm not just leaving a Sarah-sized hole in the wall, because I think about my experiences in my own life, from coming out to, to losing my husband, Andy, to cancer. And those experiences were hard, but they're relatively easy compared to the experiences of so many other people. Knowing and loving Andy left me profoundly changed. About a year into our relationship, Andy was diagnosed with cancer. We were lucky to have healthcare. We were lucky to have a flexible employer. And, and, and while Andy's cancer was eventually terminal, our privilege allowed us to have precious time together. And whether someone's struggling with COVID or cancer, whether it's a public health crisis or an individual health crisis, the same principle applies. No one should have to give up their income in the face of illness. And that's one of the reasons why I campaigned on, and now as a senator, I'm fighting for universal paid family and medical leave. The fight for LGBTQ equality isn't about some abstract moral principle. It's about making sure that we're all able to live in communities where we're treated with dignity. Ultimately, I ran for office because I'm hopeful. For as toxic and broken as our politics can seem, I've also seen that we can do big things. That only happens though if we work for it, if we speak out when we see injustice. My message to any young LGBTQ person who's thinking about running for office, your role in the LGBTQ community is your superpower. Voters are looking for authenticity and you have demonstrated a power in living your truth and walking down the street as your authentic self. And so being LGBTQ, it'll make you a better candidate. It'll make you a better elected official. And that is something we should all be proud of.